we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready now. Okay, we're here at uh, my grandmother's old house, 1830 West 149th Street. She bought this house brand new in 1942 and lived here until she passed away in 1957, after which my uncle lived here until he passed away just a couple of years ago. I think now they probably either rented it or sold it because there's been a lot of changes made uh, here that hadn't been made previously. But the old houses are still pretty much the same, except that here where this fence is, this brick and wrought iron thing, there used to be a boxwood hedge. For those who don't know what a boxwood is, we'll go up the street and look at one in a minute. Now they have fences up because they're guarding against burglary. They even have a lock on the, on the gate, which back in those days you didn't need because uh, they were very rare didn't happen very often at all. Anyway, if this house were a human, it'd be 65 years old now and we'd be drawing Social Security. And uh, all the houses in this block were built as a tract in the same uh, era, between 1940 and 41, and they were sold in 42. So that's about uh, enough said about this location. What was the, um, the, the do you want to give me some details on the, on the garage? Oh, yes. If you'll notice, all these houses right there, right there on down the line, they're all one car garages, you notice. Because back in those days, the family only had one car. And the only one that drove was father. For some reason, the women didn't drive. Uh, they didn't have to drive, really. Uh, they had most of the stuff, the bakery goods and the dairy products and everything brought to their door. They even had the Fuller Brush man and uh, the Watkins man and all these other salesmen. So they didn't really have to even go out to buy anything. They had it all right at home. And so one car garage is all was needed. Now though, the family that lives here now obviously has a couple of cars. So they had to widen the driveway and take out half of the front lawn for parking space on the outside and take the hard decision of choosing which car gets the garage and which one stays out in the weather. <laughs> so, yeah, it's remarkable that uh, you see houses with one car garages because they wouldn't build them that way now for sure. But in this era, that's the way it was. Somebody rebuilt their garage. There's one that's a two car garage over there. And that's definitely an add on. They probably uh, did that, looks like, pretty recently. But most of the other houses, you go up and down the block, they're all the same old original one-car garages. One, two, three, three we can see from here. And I'm sure the majority of them are still the same, too. Uh, was there anything else we missed? Uh, oh, yeah, we want to see the boxwood. You were going to say something about the gate, too. Oh, I mentioned that, but we didn't have the camera on it. That uh, nowadays, instead of just a boxwood hedge that wouldn't stop anybody, now you go as far as having locks on your gate because of the fear of burglars breaking into your house or garage or stealing your car or whatever. That's one of the signs of the times, <laughs> so to speak. And now for those that don't know what a boxwood is, let's walk up the street and look at a boxwood. There's only one plant there here, the boxwoods were all in a row, all the way up and down the fence line. <clears throat> I spent a lot of time in this house, too, because my grandmother's best friend, Mrs. Duke, lived in this house. And we were either at Grandma's or we were all over at Mrs. Duke's house. <laughs> So that's the only two houses in this area that I have. Yeah, they built a new garage to theirs. They knocked their old one off and built one in the back. So yeah, they, they've changed their garage. And you know what? That's not a boxwood either. I, from the distance, I thought it was a boxwood, but it's not. It's a firm. The boxwood is similar in stature, but it has small little leaves about this size. And uh, we'll look at one of them later when we run across one 
if not on our travels when we get back to my house there's one right by my front door too so we're going to see a boxwood yet stand by as for now we'll move on to the next location which will be further up uh, western avenue in a section of gardena that used to be the old downtown back when this part of town was known as manita before the incorporation of the city of gardena in 1930 and even though it was the city of gardena and had been for quite a few years when I came along, the old timers still referred to it as downtown Manita. <laughs> downtown later changed over to Gardena Boulevard and then later still what they consider downtown now on Redondo Beach Boulevard. But uh, the part we're gonna see next is the original downtown Manita slash Gardena. <laughs> depending on what generation you're from. <laughs> Most of the people call the Western Avenue section, they still call it old uh, downtown Manita. And they call it the section on Gardena Boulevard, old downtown Gardena. That's the way it's commonly referred to when the bus uh, makes it stop. And you know how they have the recording nowadays that tells you what the next stop is going to be and so forth? When you get down to uh, the stop at Berindo and Gardena Boulevard, that recording says uh, the next stop will be Gardena Boulevard and Berindo Avenue, old downtown Gardena. That's how they refer to it. And we'll cover that part of Gardena after we cover Manita. Manita came first. <laughs> okay, I think that's a wrap.